Welcome back to Film Man. As always, I'm Connor, and I'm joined by my good friend, Dan. Howdy. And this is our season premiere. Season four. It feels so right. I'm very excited. Yeah, season four, last semester of my senior year, oh, man. which is crazy. I, I should be with him, but I decided to stretch my senior year out into two years. Mm-hmm. So I will continue to be around the film and offices. Yeah. We had to make sure the legacy was going to be intact. Exactly. <laughs> um, the youngsters can't take it from us now. Yeah. But this is wait. the beginning of potentially all greatest season ever, yeah. I think. <laughs> no, but we're definitely starting off with some highlights for sure. Um, of course, you know, we have the first four episodes planned out with the Andes and a, uh, and a Twaka. But, but the one we are really excited about is what we are going to talk about today. And it is another tier list of an actress we have you know, come to really appreciate uh, in movies over the past really only five years. I mean, you talk about like our first tier list with Jennifer Lawrence being over just a decade and seeing how prolific her filmography was in a decade. This actress has almost done similar lengths within five, six years. And, of course, we are talking about Anya Taylor-Joy. Yes, from The Vivich to uh, Marrowbone, Barry, New Mutants, Emma, so many interesting films. In fact, nine. Nine we are going to highlight and talk about and put in a tier list today. Um, So I guess... uh, no need to put it off any longer. Um, I guess we can start off with uh, Connor. Uh, before we get into Vivich, any thoughts on Anya Taylor Joy? Why we wanted to cover her filmography? I mean, like you mentioned already, and like we've discussed multiple times through the show, even when she was cast as a Furiosa back in the Charlie Chicago Seven episode. Yeah, we just really like Anya Taylor Joy. We think she's like a real like I hate the term up and comer, but she's an up and comer, mm-hmm. and she's clearly coming like one of my favorite actresses. In addition to like, in like, obviously in my opinion, one of the most talented actresses working today, and uh, that comes from the fact that she's worked with a lot of really intriguing directors, including two of my favorite directors working right now, uh, Corey Finley and uh, Robert Eggers, who yep. coincidentally she's in both of their first feature films. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, and speaking of. Robert Eggers, I'm guessing. Speaking of Robert Eggers, we are starting off with our very first, her kind of breakout role. Uh, she wasn't in much before this. She has like maybe two yeah, television Yeah, a couple credits. smaller things. Yeah. yeah. But her breakout role is 2015's The Vivich, directed by Robert Eggers, who you might know from Lighthouse fame, who did a pretty clean sweep of the Andes yes. last, last year. Um, so I, I got to ask. Uh, Connor, what tier did we give Anya's performance in The Vivich? So The Vivich is a yabba dabba do. Yabba dabba do. Which is a, if you put of the colloquialism, it's a Y tier. It's a it y is the best, tier. the highest tier. Y tier. No, yes, we do like this one starting off with a Banging performance. Yes, exactly. Monty Taylor Joy. Um, this is a heavy, uh, period piece, dramatic, horrific, um, and very fun. Uh, one of those, like, classic A twenty four movies that I think kind of put them on the map a bit more. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think it, a lot of it comes from Anya Taylor Joy working with Robert Eggers and creating just this ridiculous. Um, kind of uh, emotive state yeah. for what seems to be like, again, I, I think if I'm, if I'm going into like Anya's performance and how she approached the role um, as how old is she at that point? Um, 19? Well, anyways. Anya Joy is currently 24, so that was six years ago. So she, so was, she was 18. 18. She was 18 filming uh, the Vivich, the witch, however you want to say it. Um, yeah. And I find it so amazing that even, I mean, she does play a younger character. I yeah. think, yeah, she just plays We do not know often. Thomason's age, but we can assume she's about, I'd say 16 or 16, younger. 16, yeah. I'd say 16. Um, but uh, just kind of the raw, the raw emotion she can kind of uh, invoke in the character at with someone who can not only play someone who's, like, supposed to be 16, but also make 16 look so emotive. And I think it also kind of um, really ties in 
early, this is like early on, obviously, with something I've noticed from Anya Taylor Joy and like just who she is and how she conducts herself. Um, I really feel like um, she has kind of a proper and high class demeanor. Yeah. When she comes to her acting, which you can kind of see, like, oh, maybe that's more like stage experience. But again, she's she's eighteen. Yeah, filming this. This is this is very early on. I think a lot and of that comes from just the way like on Taylor Joy looks. Yeah, she's a very unique and like striking looking individual. And I think obviously we'll go into later things. We're not talking about the miniaturist today, but that kind of like look does lead to like more like Victorian era performances exactly. where you buy her as a woman from this period. And I think it's really cool when we, we see her capturing kind of these Puritan themes of like religion, su- suppression and restraint. And I think that can be somewhat limiting for an actor, you know, when you're trying to portray someone in an emotive state but someone who has lived their life in suppression in learning to keep things yeah. quiet keep things inside and the way that that just comes out uh, yeah. throughout while the movie progresses i think is amazing you know i think she does that so well yeah i mean i agree with everything you're saying yeah and I think it's how we we both said this was like yeah why to yourself? It's, yeah it's a clear yabba dabba do it's just it's I mean, here's of the movies on this list, I think it probably actually is my favorite. Mm. With There's another one that I also hold dear. We'll talk about much later. Yeah. I think it probably is my favorite movie on this list, and that's in no short part due to Anya's performance and also the masterful direction of Robert Eggers, who both of them, for their first films, just came out swinging. Yeah. Like, they, they showed oh, yeah. us, like, they are forces to be reckoned with. And they know what they're doing. Um, if the Andes kept going, which it will after I'm, I depart, oh. um, I'm sure Anya will find a place there because she is incredible. Yeah, we'll Same see, thing with you. We'll see what she does in 2021. Yeah. Thing, while they matter much less in terms of like actual worldview, I'm sure she'll actually get an Oscar nom or two as well. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, obviously, you know, Oscar nominations, that's, yeah. I guess... You, well, it's the poor for man's of, Andes. Yeah, but. exactly. For lack of a better term, it's Bush League compared to the Andes. Andes but, yeah. like, I'd like to see her get, yeah. you know, maybe Here's an like, Oscar Throw her well. some scraps once or twice. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, an Oscar too. Whatever. Like, and she did get a Golden Globe, the she, most yeah. prestigious. <laughs> <No>. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, Vivich, why? Why tier? Debut, debut film, great. Across um, the board wise. And we are moving on uh, to the 2016 film Morgan. Which uh, is is a strong uh, default, yes. default from um, from this. This is actually a first yeah. in the tier list series. Um, what what did we give it? Well, Dan, we're making history. We all by giving our first T for tea. terrible. Oh boy! Oh jeez! Here's an Anya. It's a weird thing for me, Dan. You base. Um, this tier list primarily on Anna Taylor Joy's performance. And I do my best to try and find a balance between yeah. the film, what's given to Anya Taylor Joy with the film, what I imagine she's given for material, and then what she does with it. Yes. And this is still for me like, yeah, see, nah. for me, I try to limit it, but the movie does seep in. Mm-hmm. And if we're giving turns performance, this should be a little bit higher for Anya. Because she does have two incredibly strong moments, which we won't yeah. spoil Morgan, even though you're not missing anything. Yeah. But if we do, if there was a scene where, um, for context, this movie's like Alien, but like on a farmhouse. Yeah, Alien on a farm. <laughs> With Anya is the alien. Because the person who directed this was is Luke. Luke. Um, Luke yeah, Scott. Yeah, I forgot. Which is Ridley I Scott's. I almost said son. Luke Ridley, which is Luke not his Ridley. name. <laughs> Luke Scott, which is Ridley Scott's son, who yeah. is the director of Alien. And it feels very derivative of his dad, but also I don't like Alien, but this is a worse movie than Alien. Mm-hmm. But um, basically, there's a scene. Anti Joy is a person named Morgan who is mm-hmm. basically the, this version, like, this like the alien. A- AI, the, yeah, robot, this genetically created genetically, that child. Yeah. And she needs to be put down because she like, keeps hurting people, and in one case, mm-hmm. killing someone. <laughs> and she's on a table and she's like begging these people like who are now her family because they've literally raised her, mm-hmm. like not to kill her. And like Anya is. She's giving it literally everything she's got. And it shows, like, that's a little bit of where the witch peeks through. But mm-hmm. overall, she's just not really given anything to do. So it's not her fault that she does kind of suffer. Mm-hmm. And then the movie as a whole, there's a couple really pretty shots and a couple really cool scenes. But it falls incredibly flat. 
Yeah. It, it was definitely a difficult watch because this was the last film yeah. that we watched to create this tier list. And ending on a low note for us was difficult. But don't worry. It'll get better as this list goes along. Yeah. This is the lowest one. the only T tier. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess some things that really struck me with it. Um, uh, it's uh, at least if we want to stick to Anya because that's where I want this to be. Yeah, exactly. It, uh, she, her portrayal of um, like kind of an – uh, genetically modified whatever Morgan is I, AI robot person but looks like a person but like she a person all we know who had is like, like they made her uh, has there's like, been other hers that were not successful but now Morgan is successful yes that's all we know she's actually grown up and done things Um, she kind of tries to invoke some like ex machina lifelessness roboticness and it just it ends up looking lifeless but in a very bad way it doesn't yeah. really come across it doesn't help that the most they did to make her look like a robot was give her a hoodie and like make her makeup her make her pale that's it that's well, like for me very... it just shows like how even like an amazing actor who we've shown like even from her first performance is like incredible right at the bat yeah how working with the less like not experience because that's his both luke scott and uh robert eggers first feature yeah but just how like prepared I guess they were and how like meticulous their craft is how that affects an actor's performance even one who is incredible yeah it's what's difficult is I mean for me for a film that's named Morgan there's really not Much enough Morgan. about Morgan like yeah. it's very just not even about her so she doesn't even get that much time in the light. Anyways. It should be called Kate Mara. It should be called Kate Mara. <laughs> Kate Mara and her cool haircut and her suit <laughs> oh but I think this is along with going back to like some of the like some of the demeanor that Anya Taylor Joy invokes in her movies. One question I kept asking myself that really helped me determine how I feel about these movies is: Does Anya being in the movie make at least for like the movies that we consider less good, yeah. the bad movies? Radio air quotes. Does she make a bad film better? And this is something I see that I think actresses and actors that can sometimes separate them. That if if you're in a if you're in a somewhat bad movie or a bad production, do you is the audience member feeling that this is too bad that this actress or actor had to be in this movie? Oh man! Or are they like, hey, at least this actor and actress is in this movie, making the experience yeah. better? And this is an example where it's like, I'm just, I'm, I feel bad that Anya Taylor Joy's in this movie. You know? Yeah. Because like, as much as I think she wanted to try, I think there's a sense. There's a sense that it's not as strong of a performance because there's little to go on. So well, she isn't like you mentioned. She's not given much to try at. Exactly. The scenes where she is able to give a great performance, like um, like I mentioned, the scene where she's on the table, but the also one where she's caught talking to uh, Paul Giamatti's character. Mm -hmm. She's able to actually do something in those scenes, and we actually see her attempt something, and she succeeds. Yeah. So I guess just so this doesn't grind on our brains anymore, I'm going to say we're moving on. We're moving <laughs> from, on. From Morgan um, to uh, the next uh, 2016 uh, Netflix original, Barry, which is a, a biopic of Barack Obama's time in college. And uh, Anya Taylor-Joy actually plays Charlotte. So this is uh, before yeah. Barry went to law school and yeah, met his Michelle college Obama, girlfriend. His college girlfriend. So she's Charlotte, uh, Barry's college girlfriend, and... What what tier did we give Barry? We gave Barry a V for very average. Very average. Um, I think for me, I, I do like this film quite a bit, probably more than you. You do, yeah. Yeah. A full star more than me. Oh, really? Because you gave it four, I gave it three, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Well, how about that? Yeah, how about <laughs> um, them? How about them apples? <laughs> well, I'll be honest. Uh, for me, I did. I think I did want to tier this a bit higher, but I am pretty happy. I think I wanted to give it worth a watch just yeah. for Anya. This is one we did debate on. Yeah, but it's definitely like... In the average tier, it's in the middle, you know, it doesn't blow me away. But I mean, her character work, I think, is great. Yeah. Like the character structure of her, her high class kind of proper demeanor shines and fits so well in kind of this like Connecticut family, New York City, like NYU, Ivy Leaguer. Because, again, what what is this like 80s? I, I believe it's, it's like the it's, early 80s. It's early 80s. And there's kind of this sense of um, privilege that Charlotte is coming from, but but also with a very liberal sensibility. 
And I yeah. think that really comes through in her performance, uh, which and I it, appreciate. It helps we also, like, go to a liberal arts college where we know a lot of people who are like Charlotte. Yeah. And then that scene when uh, Barry goes and meets Charlotte's parents. Exactly. And, they're, and they have, like, they're, they're kind of like the liberal bastions. Exactly, who are, like, yeah. doing all these all this, this good stuff. Yeah. They kind of, like, they claim they're due so much because they were, like, the youth in their youth, like, when they were Charlotte's age, were so involved. But now yeah. they fall into the cycle of, like, well, I care. I donate money. Exactly. That kind of stuff. But I think... What I can appreciate most about this movie is the fact that uh, Charlotte's arc in relation to Barry, which is like as he sinks deeper into her world and then the kind of apex at that wedding scene. Exactly. When yeah. you see that like he kind of has this realization of what kind of world Charlotte is living in mm-hmm. and how how he relates to it. Um, it's great. Yeah. I really like how she portrays that and how the movie portrays it. Exactly. Um, so at the end of the day, I, I always am so happy that Anya Taylor Joy has in has a performance like this yes. in her filmography. You know, I think it's something definitely that humanizes her. You know, because yeah. what is she? She's played uh, she's played like superheroes now. She's played classic characters of literature through Emma. Um, uh, she's played uh, animated. Yes. People. <laughs> she's um, played a Playmobile. A Playmobile. And she's also just like this mythical teen in the V-Match, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like something that's like elevated, this, these grand performances. Yeah. And just to see her as like a regular. Yeah. We don't see her as like a regular girl, person like, very often. Yeah. And I think it's kind of cool to see yeah. that angle because yeah. it fits her well. Because even when she plays a regular person, there's always something there. Mm-hmm. Like we'll there's talk about air. it like later, like in uh, Thoroughbreds. She's yeah. much like a regular girl. But Thoroughbreds is not like a, a story of a regular girl doing regular things. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, moving on from Barry is uh, Split. Split. 2017? 20, early, I think it was January 2017. There it is. So early 2017, uh, you guys might know the director M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. He's done a couple things. Yeah. You might know, you know, Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense. Signs. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, Unbreakable. Unbreakable, which yeah. Which Split ends up being a sequel to. Now, I'm not going to mention yeah. Glass because uh, I feel like Anya Taylor-Joy has very little to do Doing in Glass, Glass yeah. which is the sequel to Split. The third installment of like the Unbreakable trilogy. Yeah. But Split, she plays a lead role, uh, kind of aside from James McAvoy. Um, what tier did we give Split? We gave Split a W for worth a watch. Worth a watch. Now we should actually talk about like the elephant in the room with Split. Where do you you're saying, you always like manage to find a way to like avoid like the internet and like the uh, culture surrounding a certain thing. I, I, I have found a way, yes. But in some cases, that is very good. But uh, the thing with Split, um, for those who don't know what Split's about, basically this girl play, named Casey, played by Taylor Joy, is abducted by this guy who has DID, played by James McAvoy, and eventually she has to fight to escape. Yeah, and she has... And there's two other girls with her. Two other girls with her. But and, we'll get to that. Yeah, um, uh, and he ends up playing, what, 24? 24 personalities. Obviously, we only see, like... Four or five yes. of the main ones, yes. kind of the leaders. But the issue but with the movie, a lot of people pointed out, is that many believe it points a very, very negative picture of people with DID and dissociative identity disorder and how it makes them seem scary or violent. Yeah. And here's I, – I have a friend, we actually a mutual friend, Miranda, who yeah. refuses to watch Split for that exact reason. She feels like it is harmful for depictions of mental health. And while I do not share that same sentiment – I, I, I do agree how that interpretation could be had by others, and I don't I don't begrudge anyone who like for this for instance like does not want to watch this or Glass for that exact reason. Yeah, absolutely. And I acknowledge like we're not trying to like promote negative depictions of mental health by saying we both enjoy Glass Split. I'm sorry, we both split, enjoy yeah. Split. I mean, I think but, for me it's kind of similar to like the Joker argument. Ex- exactly. Of, like, yeah. is it a negative depiction of mental health, as in like this is what mental health is? Or is it an isolated case that makes for yeah. a, in, a, a compelling story yeah. in a movie? Because I think for a lot of people, it's a matter of, like, what are you showing the audience? Exactly. What do you want them to take away from this? No. And I think it's a way, like, the way I justify seeing this is that this is just an extreme example that is nothing like the reality. But I think there's yeah. plenty of people out there who wouldn't realize that. Yeah. And that's where the fear comes in that, like, See, this is a bad depiction. What I take it as is it is not – 
his DID that, like, gave him his powers or anything. No. It's a thing, like, in his DID, like, the way, like, um, it's manifested through trauma, like we see. Yeah. And M. Night is actually responsible in some aspects by showing the various aspects of DID and how, like, it is made through trauma and you develop protectors and aggressors. It's not aggressors, but there's a term for, like, you have personalities that protect you and those that sometimes want to hurt you. Yeah. He's trying his best to display it responsibly. Yeah. But here's I'm rambling because I don't want people to, like, think I'm a bad guy. I'm okay, guys, please but, don't hurt me. I like Split, please. No, here's the <laughs> no. thing. No, seriously, I but get no, it. Yeah. Thing. But, yeah. I think, Honestly, let's let's talk about Anya Taylor Joy in this movie. You know, yes. like, this is this is what we're here for. We want to we wanna talk some I do want to end one point on this, the DID thing, though. Go ahead. I Like I said earlier, I just think it's a thing where he was trying to be responsible with it. But since it's not about um, Kevin Wendell Crumb and James McAvoy's character, it does come off a little bit harmful because he doesn't have time to fully like explain himself why he made that choice. Yeah. But the important thing here is Anya Taylor Joy because yes. this isn't called uh, Connor explains like how Split could be problematic for an hour. <laughs> um, um, here's, I think Anya's great in this movie. Yeah, I think I, this that's is a, why it's worth a watch. Yeah. Um, I think it feels very weird to watch this, especially when things are just opening up and you still have like there's a good portion of the movie when the three girls are together in the room after the abduction from James McAvoy's character, there is such a contrast between Anya and these other two girls. And this is nothing, obviously, against the other two actresses that all portraying yeah. these girls, but it feels like almost some kind of bizarre meta-commentary on how her, like, Anya is just, like, a level up on yes. acting. Achoo. Like, I get, like... Anya is supposed to be kind of the black sheep. She's kind of yeah. separate from the other two because they're kind of. An, I, th- I think what I mean, what Anya's performance does incredibly well is it's it shows like as someone who's also gone through trauma, while she does not suffer the same way that um, James McAvoy's char- James McAvoy's character does, she does understand him, and she realizes that he is doing these things because he has gone through so much terrible stuff in his own life. This is why he acts out. Yeah. And if for anything, Dan, speaking of the other two girls, do you know who one of the other girls is? Andy nominee Haley Lou Richardson. No way. Yeah. Really? Wow. I d- oh, yeah, Andy nominee. Yeah, Andy nominee for that. the masterpiece Five Feet Apart. Still haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it's that's the strength of her performance as well and how good the script is in some yeah. aspects is that you were able to, like, through her trauma, she understands um, James McAvoy's character, and they do develop kind of a kinship between uh, her and one of his personalities, explicitly um, Hedwig, who's mm-hmm. a little boy. Yeah. And she connects with him. And while that connection is used as a means of escape, with a great scene, me and, my, me and Steve always quote, was like, you thought it was a wheel window? We quote that all the time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, it's the kind of thing where she, that connection develops the means of escape originally. Yeah. But she does develop a kinship with him as she begins to learn more about him and his past. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we're going to take a quick break from that. Um, we're going to move on and finish up with our final five films of the tier list uh uh stick around and we'll be right back after this quick psa break running late to class but still need that morning caffeine or hot breakfast to start your day out right download the bite app by sodexo and place your custom order for fast easy pickup at zyme open 8 30 a.m to 3 o'clock p.m mondays through fridays Hey guys, welcome back to Film and, and we're diving right into um, a movie that's close to both of our hearts. Yeah, something we've always really liked. This is uh, Thoroughbreds by Corey Finley. Uh, to quote Radio Rialto in the Year of Our Lord, twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Um, and Connor, I gotta ask, what uh, what tier did we give Thoroughbreds? So Dan, um, I'm gonna give Fred a break, and I'm gonna be the one to say Yabba Dabba Do. Yabba Dabba. That was a Flintstones joke for your kids at home. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. Oh, so I didn't get Fred a break. He's going to no, say it anyway. No, he's going to say it anyway. Dang. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we gave this a Y tier. Um, I'm going to be honest. I have very little to say about this movie other than the fact that I, I it, it's dear to my heart. I love it. Um, it, 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 she, it it's kind of Anya's proper uh, kind of upper class demeanor almost that she yes. invokes at its height you know um olivia cook as amanda 
with Lily, which is Anya Taylor-Joy's character. Amazing duo. And the fact seeing that this was originally written for the stage, I think, is such an interesting point, the way to look at this movie. Those are my three points. I really want Connor to just monologue on this one because, (laughs) guys, I love hearing Connor talk about Thoroughbreds. It's a very good movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's near and dear to my heart as well. It's who I now uh, share with. I showed this to my girlfriend recently, and she loves it as well. So it's one I can can spread the wealth. I also saw this movie on a date. So it's a very unique, like, weird, romantic sphere Hmm. with me and Thoroughbreds. Um, but, uh, yeah, extremely good movie. Anto Joy kills it as always. This was my first, like, real introduction to her. Yeah. Because I knew who she was, obviously, and I'd seen her other things. This is the first, I was like, oh, Anya Taylor-Joy, like, is a force. And here's, and Anya, I, hopefully, Anya it stays with us for many, many, many years to come. I want to see her drop in performances in, like, 2090. Yeah. And here's, like, Anya, here's, like, She's, I meant it earlier, like, if Anya Taylor-Joy does not get an Oscar in the next, like, five years, the system is wrong. Even, like, yeah, just yeah. even the nomination, man. Like, yeah, if she keeps her trajectory, if her if she does not, like, pull a low hand, she, like, is going to be the big thing. And I would be flabbergasted that's not the case. I think, I feel like a lot of people like putting her in the same alley as Streep. Like yeah, she could just be a Meryl Streep. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin my career by saying this. I might she might be a better actress than Meryl Streep. <gasps> that's a that's a hot tea for you. Someone sound the alarm, everybody. <laughs> Connor's taking names with yeah. Meryl Streep. When I get canceled. <laughs> hey, they're both great, man. I'm. I mean, they're both great. I'm not. I, I'm seen not postcards on the edge. I'm I not. Think I so. am not. <laughs> and I'm not saying Meryl Streep is a bad actress. Hey, not. Julie and Julia. No, that's here's a thing. Meryl Streep, great actress. I'm just saying. I the people compare her to Meryl. Mm-hmm. I think Anya right now, like she's like there people. She could be the next Meryl. I think her and Meryl are about neck and neck in terms of talent. I mean, the thing is, right now it helps that Anya. If Anya Taylor Joy were to continue to just be a quality actress, dropping great performances yeah. for like the next thirty years, yeah, she's gonna be at yeah. Meryl levels of like fifteen nominations or whatever. Yeah. But right now, yeah, I mean, it's nice that we have actresses and actors. Like in our generation, she's like what two or three years older than us. She's uh, two years older than me, three than you. Yeah, yeah she's our generation's Meryl right now, yeah. or come up and comer. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah. like every generation has like their like group of like tech greats, and obviously, it's our generation. So to us, they're especially relevant. Exactly. But it's crazy to see like there's so many like amazingly talented performers that are like around the same age as us, like really coming up. In terms of, like, the Andes, we've already discussed them. Because I think, believe our Andes, the oldest nominee in our lead actor category was 30. Yeah, we did We did have a very young yeah. cast of characters. And, I mean, I don't want to spoil ours. Oh, actually, we, we do have a much older pool this year, I'm realizing. And in some places. Yeah, in some areas, it, yeah. yeah. But uh, we're getting off track. Uh, thoroughbreds. Yes. We're getting off track, though, Dan, because it's not much better than, like, great movie. Yeah. If all there's around. one movie we want you to watch out of this tier list, it's Thoroughbreds. It's, yeah, it's like, Thoroughbreds. It. I mean, that final scene... Yes. Which, oh, gives me, oh. Yeah. Because here's the thing, oh. once you watch <laughs> Thoroughbreds, and you, here's the thing, you're in a very good spot. With that being your first Anya, what an amazing, like, way to start off this person's career. Absolutely. And if you guys have not seen an Anya Taylor Joy movie yet, start with Thoroughbreds. Do it. Because that is a great, great experience. Go Thoroughbreds Witch. Uh, you can probably skip Morgan. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. But, um, um, oh, next up, we've got Marrow Bone. Uh, I think one thing that really defined um, Anya Taylor-Joy's earlier career, and even up to now, is that she hasn't shied away from being in horror and suspense flicks. And Marrowbone, a great example of that as Allie, um, kind of the neighbor to this uh, family who is struggling with a uh, creepy ghost father in the attic. Is he real? Is he not? What's real? Who knows? Uh, In Marrowbone. Watch it now. No. (laughs) But basically, what tier? What tier did we give this, my man? Such a much deblation on our part. Hmm. Marybone is a W for worth a watch. Worth a watch. There, It's not Anya's movie at all. She plays a small role, and obviously what she's in it is fine, but if you're coming to this movie to watch it for Anya, you, I think you will be disappointed because the kind of the lead, George McKay, this really is George McKay's movie. It is, um, yeah. You know, Anya Taylor-Joy, she's really barely in it, especially in the middle section. Um, she just kind of pops in. Um, and really, she's only there at the end to reveal the big yeah. twist. Here's the thing. The funny thing is, I'm going to go back to something you said. 
if you're watching this for Anya, you, why do you saying Anya? Anya, you will be disappointed. It's like uh, the, the the singer, Anya. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I came to this for her, was not disappointed. No, here's the, I think I agree with your criticisms that she's not in much of the movie. And uh, she is. She does basically just disappear in the middle. Mm-hmm. And I think while she is there to reveal the twist, I think how the twist is revealed through her character is very incredibly well done. And I think her performance throughout is just incredible. I think I believe uh, Lily is in Lily. No, what's her name? Yeah, what, is it Lily? Allie. Allie. Because she's Lily's, Lily's thoroughbreds. Yeah. yeah. I believe Allie. I believe relationship with George McKay's character, that entire family. You literally have one scene with her with the entire family, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean. I believe that closeness. I believe that bond. I believe her and George McKay, like, the feelings they have for each other and those are developing, the sweetness between them. And I think that just speaks to um, George McKay as a performer as well. Yeah. That I, I believe everything about her, and I believe Allie in this world. And I think here's there's a scene later where um, Allie is in a place where she is, like, terrified, where she's, like, up and gets in a situation that uh, is an, incredibly frightening. Yes. And I just believe, I believe Anya in that moment. I think she's definitely terrified and like she's just an incredible actress mm-hmm. and she can just like we talked about Zendaya on the Phil Maastricht episode which watched our Phil Maastricht on Malcolm Marie mm-hmm. she can just very easily access emotion and there's nothing that like rings false about her no matter what even in more like ridiculous things like we'll talk about later she never has a false note you believe her from the second she's on screen till the final frame it's true I, I think it's still a quality performance from her um I guess for me, I'm still always going to be kind of like, she's not doing enough. Her character doesn't have a ridiculous amount of agency at the end of the day. Not that that's yeah. not that it's an issue when she's supporting. No. There, but there like, is some faults to her character. Yeah. I will, I will acknowledge that fully. But like, it, as far as like acting performance and and her just bringing it around, it's it, it's classic Anya Taylor Joy. Exactly, it's classic yeah. ATJ. You won't be disappointed for what you get from her. Exactly. But it's it's kind of like getting like a single slice of turkey on a turkey sandwich. It's like, dude, where's the? You don't get any beef. There's the no cool Arby's. Heavy, where's the beef? Where's the beef? That's guys. Wendy's, I guess. <laughs> Here's, I get what you're saying. In terms like we've been spoiled with the witch and thoroughbreds True. and split, where, where she's like, just been incredible. in extensive leading roles, and yeah. you just get to see her for the entire movie. But. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, yeah. So I guess moving on from that, uh, we have a bit of a, a drop. Didn't do much in 2018, did she? No, I don't think. I mean, um, let's look at her IMDb. But I think that's like her off Unless it's miniaturist. Here. That probably is miniaturist, yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, I can't believe we didn't mention this at the beginning. Anya Taylor-Joy, you probably all know her from Queen's Gambit. Yeah. We are not doing the limited series, the, the, the TV today. We're not doing miniaturist and Queen's Gambit. But yeah. if you guys were fans of that, please check out her yeah. filmography. And know? we can both, I mean, we can both pretty commonly say she's also very good in Queen's that's, Gambit. Yes, yes. Um, yes, she is. So uh, moving on to a 2019 film that was uh, seeing a very long uh, rollout, uh, Playmobil the movie. We see Anya as an older sister whose uh, younger brother, um, years after the loss of their parents, uh, escapes into this uh, imaginary animated world of Playmobiles, and, and they both have to kind of just, I don't know, save the day in this mm-hmm. Playmobil world. And also, it's a musical. Yes. <laughs> which really threw me off. She has one amazing know. song in the beginning about being an adventurer or an explorer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what tier did we give this? So Dan, funny enough, with Morgan being our T tier, this is our most controversial tier. Indeed. In terms, we actually argued about this. And you actually want to move it a step higher than I did. I did. And Playmobil is a V for very average. Very average. I'm not a huge fan of this movie. It's not a great movie. But it comes back to this idea of, is Anya making a bad movie better? And I think this is the best example of her making a bad movie better for me. You know, having her here is just nice. I think she does such a great job with this role. And mostly because... Um, she is not a bad singer. I no. was just impressed that she pulls off some great v- vocals. And also, from someone that's, like, really young in her career so far, not having voiceover roles. Like, she hasn't – she didn't go into voiceover. She didn't go stalt in animation or anything. This is her first animated film where she just does voice acting. And it is really impressive that she's able to pull off such a good performance. 
as just a voice actor. Like, being... I guess it's not too much of a surprise when you see her, like, just nailing the uh, Puritan New England dialect of the Vivich or, like, the period dialect of Emma, which we'll talk about right after this. But you just see her, like, she has this amazingly emotive voice yeah. and is completely on display in Playmobil the movie. And, and I love that about it. And I wanted to fight to make it worth a watch. And I'll take very average because the movie is very average. Yeah. But if you're coming for Anya... Again, I you won't be disappointed. Yeah, if you're coming for Anya, it is it's prime Anya content. Like I always say with um, P A C prime Anya, Anya content. content. <laughs> like I always say with Remember the Titans, mm-hmm. Ryan Gosling is barely in Remember the Titans, but the bits you get are prime Gosling content. Mm-hmm. He dances, he does he's a little goofy boy. <laughs> That's prime Ryan content. This yeah. is prime Anya content. We see her sing and dance and wear a cool hat being an explorer, yeah. and we see her as a little plastic woman talking to Daniel Radcliffe, who's a spy, yep. and selling burritos with Jim Gaffigan. It's a fun time. The movie is really, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I couldn't quite get a W, because here's the thing. Playmobil movie is not worth a watch. What's worth a watch is you typing on YouTube, Anya Taylor-Joy Playmobil movie scenes, yeah. or Playmobil movie songs. Mm-hmm. That's what's worth it. There's a couple of good bits in the movie. It's difficult to surf through, like, almost two hours of the movie just, just to for, get Anya stuff. Yeah, because there's mean, she's a lead, content. you know. You she's, get, she's a lead. Which is helpful. Well, it's, I, I'm glad this movie exists because it does add a lot of spice to her filmography. Mm-hmm. And I like actors that really like taking new and cool different risks doing things like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that there is an Anya Taylor-Joy movie where she's a little plastic woman who sings songs. That's a good, fun time. Yeah. And I'm glad that exists. Okay, so... We're coming in March 2020. Her next big role is Emma as Emma. (laughs) She Uh, plays Emma Woodhouse. Yes, from the classic uh, Jane Austen novel, Emma. Um, uh, Connor, I, 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 I hesitate to ask, but I think it's important. What tier did we give this? Emma is a W for worth a watch. Worth a watch. Um... Yeah, I mean, if we're if we're talking if we're talking Emma, this is this is another another PAC Prime Anya content. content. Um, and again, like Thoroughbreds, like Barry, this high class kind of uptight, above the rest, very sure of self, um, just comes out so well. Yes. You know, it's so interesting that she's done kind of she's had this air of almost nobility with her acting performances and it still hasn't gotten stale yeah because we keep seeing this in so in so many places and she's just finding a way to inject this into the character and have it just be her take um but she just has this this swaggering confidence you know just in her comfort uh and her and i guess I don't know how she can sound so natural with these ridiculous historical dialogue sections of Emma and Vivich, but she does. Yeah. Um, it's it's really nice. And obviously the period perfect set design reminiscent of Vivich as well, which yeah. really adds to her just being in this world. And it's it's honestly it's 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 what I prefer most about the movie. I'm not a huge fan of the movie overall. I have to I like the a different the Gwyneth Paltrow Emma I actually like more I like that movie more that's my jam I I think I just I like the aesthetic of that one more because this one is almost like a weird hyper stylized yes. quirky Emma which yeah. is kind of not my thing but it doesn't have to be my thing you know I can still respect it and be like yeah, whatever it's fine yeah because nothing else other than Anya Taylor Joy and the production design really stands out to me for Emma so yeah those my thoughts because this is directed by Autumn DeWild, which is a photographer. Mm. Oh, so yeah. she's a photographer. So, of course, like this is like a beautiful, beautiful photographed movie. Mm-hmm. And the sets and the costume and production design are very colorful and vibrant. And the tone of the movie is very, like, quirky, which I think Anya is, like, really has a lot of fun with it. There are certain scenes, like uh, the nosebleed scene, where it's just insane and I love it so much it's her like having this like loose argument with uh, Mr. Knightley yep and it, she and uh, Johnny Flynn are just going nuts yeah. and it's so much fun and she has moments like that where she's able to stand out and the rest of the cast will stand out so explicitly because they're just bonkers and that like if not, that's not everyone's cup of tea 
Yeah, like I, I, the thing is, I don't usually go to Emma for bonkers. You don't go to <laughs> Jane Austen for some zany, from some zany moments. I mean, I go for zaniness, but uh, I think there's a lack, there's a lack of nuance in the new yeah, Emma yeah, that it, I, it, that just makes me lose it. See, you know? I, I get what you're saying though. For me, I think the zaniness does act in contrast to the source material mm-hmm. in some aspects. And while this is a better Emma than Clueless, speaking of which, they're getting canceled again on that one. But um, I think um, it does have some struggles in terms of the narrative of Emma. And uh, I guess moving on from that. Um, to our final movie. Our final movie. Uh, August 2020. I saw this boy at the drive-in. Yeah. Yes, sir. As did I. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, anyways, uh, New Mutants. Uh, this is kind of the extra little bit from yeah. the X-Men universe. It, I it's don't know the where, final Fox X-Men the movie. The final Fox X-Men movie. It kind of stands in a weird place where yeah. it could move on into the Disney world or it could just be like an unfinished reminiscent yeah. remembrance of the old X-Men universe. But what what tier did we give this? We gave New Mutants a V for a v, very, average. very average. I had my mic in the way of my laptop. <laughs> and um, Anya Taylor-Joy plays... Ilana Rasputin, right? Yeah. Uh, Ilana Rasputin, um, uh, the Russian badass with yeah. a dragon on with her a shoulder. a cool sword and a dragon <laughs> And puppet. a dream in her heart. <laughs> and she goes, this is my dragon friend. He is my friend. His name is Lukjo. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So I think this, I think for a lot of people, New Mutant Stands is kind of a difficult yeah. uh, justification as a good movie. It, it's got a lot of issues. And it had a lot of issues in production. Yes. And it's famously bad uh, production issues. Well, the um, funny thing is, Dan, you said 2020. This is technically a 2017 movie. That's what's insane. 2017. Um, and it, we finally got it in 2020. Yeah. Only because they just dropped it during the pandemic. Yeah, it was so. supposed to come out April 13th, 20, 2018. Because it was cool. filmed in 2017. And then we get it two and a half years, years later. later. Yeah. Um, Personally, I would have tiered this much lower because I do yeah. really not like this movie at all. Yeah, I but fought for this one. I ask myself, does Anya's performance make a bad movie better? Overall, yes. But for me, no. Um, it, I don't know. I mean, I, do, I don't want to end on a criticism, but this has got to be personally my least favorite Anya performance. Oh, well, not Morgan. What am I saying? I'll say that. Second that's, least. That's some slim. I mean, so for those who can't see, Morgan. I stared Dan dead in the eyes and grabbed my mic and moved it ridiculously close to my lips. He did. And I was about to say, that's slander. Yeah, no. It's second least. I, I forgot about Morgan. But I don't know. The accent for me feels parodical and silly. and Not offensive, but like parodical and silly. Um, the dialogue is weak, but that's not really her fault. Uh, sh- and she doesn't really help with like the delivery and I don't know the, the interactions feel really awkward between everybody and despite the the high caliber of the cast yeah you have some great at like, least in terms names. of like modern television you have uh, Maisie Williams and um, Charlie Heaton yes like Stranger Things and uh, Game Lord of, of Thrones the, Lord of, I almost said Lord of the Thrones <laughs> Lord of the Thrones Lord of the Thrones fame <laughs> Yeah, you have, um, and the guy, I'm blanking the guy who plays Sunspot and the girl that plays uh, Daniel Moonstar, but they've had relative success as well. Good actor. Henry Zarga is uh, Moon, uh, Sunspot, and I'm blanking on uh, Daniel Moonstar's actress, which let me look at that. Well, anyways, usually um, having someone like Anya Taylor-Joy in a movie like this would improve the experience, but for me, I feel like it just ends up dragging her down in the way Morgan does. See, I don't fully get to that point. Yeah. But that woman's name who plays Danny Moonstar is Blue Hunt. Um, yeah, I, the cast is very solid. And I think, obviously, it's hard to fully speak on the movie and Anya in it because this thing was cut to high heaven oh, geez, and man. has been through so many stages. And there's conflicting reports. Like, there was research to make it scarier. There was research to make it more family-friendly. It's all this kind of stuff, and like, if you ask like the cast, reshoots never even happened. And this whole thing, like, we're supposed to have um, John Hamm and um, uh, Antonio Banderas in this movie. Yeah, like, that and just where never we're, it's happened. So bizarre. Like at the end of the day, all these questions and unfinished things make it 
fascinating, but not yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I would argue Anna and why I fought for this is fun in this movie. I like Ilyana. I like her and her dragon puppet. I like that she's able to be ridiculous again. And I like that. I like that she speaks like this. Uh, I, I wish she could be the ridiculous part of a more serious, good movie. Yes. No, I because like... Because at the end of the day, everything else... Ju- like, her arc, she doesn't really have one. It's hot. Like, I mean, yeah. even uh, Moonstall, the uh, the protagonist barely even has an arc. Yes. And well, that's the protagonist we're talking about. That's a fault of the cut of this movie. It is. Like the Fox Fantastic Four, you can tell and like... um. Justice League, the version we saw for getting the Snyder Cut next month. Mm-hmm. You can tell this was not the movie Josh Boone was trying to make. Yeah. This is not the script he gave in. This is not the cut he showed Fox. You can tell they took it and they chipped or like chip chopped. They um, chippity chopped. They chippity chopped it to high heaven. So now it is not the movie that we were supposed to see. It is a weird Frankenstein of things. Yeah, which is which is sad. But I think even throughout all of that, I try and isolate Anya's performance. And yeah. even then, I think if there is one line of dialogue that just uh, seared itself into my mind to remind myself why I didn't like her performance was lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. I know, I'm pretty sure you lions, like that tigers, line. Bears, oh my. Oh my god. Here's the thing, I like I, God, I wish stuff. I liked that. I wanted Here's to, but it's so, it's, it's, it just shows how out of place she is, how out of place the character is, how weirdly written. Like, we don't really know what her tone is, you know? Like, somewhat comedic and sadistic. Yeah. Well, and nihilist, she's... but also kind of like, has a there's, bit of a, I don't know. Here's it, because it's a weird thing where Boone is, he's going into horror cliche multiple times in the movie. And he falls into a lot of other cliches on top of that while he's trying to subvert horror cliches. And for a large chunk of the movie, Ileana is the antagonist before we get the actual antagonist, which is like the spirits and the bear. Yeah. Because he's like, she's weirdly, like terribly racist to Danny Moonstar for no reason. It's just like, we don't get why that Ileana is doing this or why she even, because I don't think she even, she doesn't even have the belief she gives out. She just wants to be cruel to Danny. Yeah. And we don't get much of her character until later. And even then, the parts we get are, we can tell they were, there there was much more that just didn't make the movie. Yeah. Like, this movie is like 90 minutes flat when I feel this was like a two-hour movie. Agreed. Yeah. There was so much more I think we needed to see. Exactly. To make us care. Yeah. Here's you know? the bicep. And I think it's just because it might be Anya, but I do care about Liana, and I do care about Lockjaw, her dragon friend. I, it's I, so here's the thing, weird. Dan, if you told yeah. me, which if you take all of it away, there is a movie where Anya Taylor Joy has a goofy Russian accent and bangs, can make a sword out of thin air, and has a dragon puppet that's her best friend. That sounds utterly, completely amazing. I mean, yeah, if we're looking, if we want to wrap things up, and we're looking at the future of Anya Taylor-Joy, we have uh, uh, Late Night in Soho yes. and Furiosa. Two, yeah. and the and, new David and, O. Russell movie. New David O. Russell movie. Three movies that could turn yeah. out to be some of our all favorites of incredible. the decade. No. I mean, you look at the cast that's in the David O. Russell movie. Exactly. You look at the fandom that I personally have for George for Miller's Mad Max. Mad Max. Um, and yeah, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for, you know, joining us on the beginning of the end for my time here at Phil Man. Oh, God. Oh, God. And um, I, I've loved doing this with you guys, and I'm so excited for the rest of the season. And um, thank you for listening to this episode. If you haven't um, and you are interested in Malcolm Marie at all and or to seen the movie, make sure to check out the film asterisk we did about Malcolm Marie. Mm-hmm. And we're so excited for you guys to join us next week, whatever we do. Well, we know what we're doing next week. Next no, week, actually, the Andy is the second annual Andy nominations. Nomination week, very exciting. Very exciting. Can't we're getting wait. ahead of the Oscars because, like those uh, wimps over at the Academy, we don't let no virus slow us down. Nope, no Rona is keeping we us down from, from giving all awards. Oh, um, <laughs> that's here's the thing. I hope I that's not that. an insensitive joke. Dude, we are, we all. I feel like we're constantly taking pot shots at the, the Oscars. Oscars for no reason. <laughs> Here's the, it's a good bit. Like we're we're the prime award show. We are. We're, the, but the, it's, you know the the tagline of the Andes, the award show that, that matters. matters. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for joining us. If you want to hear more about all these movies and we just talk about in the future or the past, mm. uh, make sure to follow me on Letterboxd at Cranberry18. That is C R A N D Berry18. 
Thank you so much for listening, guys. We will hear us next week. Thank you.